some of the people in the room have heard me talk on the Chinese economy in recent months, and two or three months ago when I was talking about China, uh, my title was China Surviving the Crisis. But in the last two months, uh, with the arrival of uh, some new data, which I'll talk about, uh, I've become much more optimistic, and uh, I, I do think it's fair to say that uh, China is now leading the global economic recovery. Mike has already mentioned uh, the rapid growth uh, on a quarter over quarter basis of many emerging markets in Asia. China is certainly one of them. Uh, the Chinese released this data for the first time, uh, first time they've ever released quarter over quarter seasonally adjusted growth expressed at an annual rate. And you can see the numbers. The, the bottom in terms of the slowdown was the fourth quarter of last year. By the first quarter of this year, uh, we're up to 8.5 percent. and the second quarter is 14.9 percent. So this is an economy uh, that is clearly uh, recovering relatively early uh, and at a very, very strong pace. Obviously, the quarter over quarter uh, growth rate is going to come down uh, as we move through the, the balance of the year, but I don't think there's any doubt that China is well within uh, reach of growing at 8 percent or perhaps even more on a year over year basis. So what I want to talk about is what's the, what's the explanation for this performance, and then I want to turn to the, the criticisms that are so widespread about how this growth is not sustainable for, for a variety of different reasons. On the policy front, I think China's done uh, relatively well. They started their monetary easing uh, in the fall last year. They reduced the required reserve ratio for banks. They cut the benchmark interest rates. Here's the one-year rate, for example. Um, and we saw a very, very strong response uh, from uh, the banking system, very substantial increase in uh, lending year to date, even one month beyond what I show in this diagram. Lending this year is running at about two and a half times. The increase in lending is running at about two and a half times the pace of 2008. So the banks have responded to the measures that I just mentioned, getting rid of credit quotas and a number of other steps that were taken. Uh, as part of the monetary easing. There's a big stimulus program, which has gotten a lot of attention, very heavily focused on investment, but much less noticed. Uh, the China's program also includes a substantial increase in social expenditures. Uh, in other words, this is not just an investment-driven response. Uh, in 2007 and 2008, social expenditures were running, uh, their growth was expanding at about 30 percent per year. Uh, in the first half of this year, the expansion continues at a very, very rapid pace, particularly for health uh, expenditures and even for education where the pace of expenditure growth has slowed down a little bit. Education, the growth of education expenditures is now running at close to three times the uh, growth of nominal uh, GDP. So there's a very substantial social expenditure approach, uh, social expenditure component of the uh, expansion program. Uh, so I think the, uh, the stimulus is uh, a big part of the explanation for why they've recovered uh, so rapidly. The other part of the explanation uh, is China's very limited exposure to global financial markets, and I could take you through some, some familiar numbers. A lot of emerging markets are suffering from the slowdown in cross-border capital flows. China's foreign direct investment inflows are declining quite substantially, about 20 percent year to date. But foreign investment is a very, very small part of China's total investment, running at about 3 percent. So even if this were to all disappear, it doesn't have any uh, very substantial effects, particularly uh, in the short run. Similarly, some emerging markets are suffering from the withdrawal of foreign bank uh, lending. Uh, this is really not a factor in China. The banks are not, the foreign banks are not participating in, in the very rapid expansion of credit that we've seen so far this year, but they only account for about 2.5 percent of bank assets. So the foreign bank presence <clears throat> is pretty minor. And of course, finally, uh, China is not suffering from the withdrawal of uh, equity uh, capital. The, the foreign ownership of, uh, in China's stock market is extremely limited, well under 1 percent uh, in 2008. So China is not subject to the kind of uh, linkages to the global financial markets that uh, we've seen elsewhere. Their banks did not uh, purchase a lot of the toxic assets. Uh, that were on offer. The total write-offs of Chinese banks are running probably cumulatively about 10 billion, for all toxic stuff, all to eight, et cetera, et cetera, is running about $10 billion overall. And so China's banks have emerged in a very, very strong position, as you can see uh, if you ever look at the global rankings of banks, uh, and their profitability remains very, very high. And of course, overall, China has a very large uh, net foreign investment position, about $1.5 at the end of last year 
which dwarfs uh, the foreign investment position of any other, uh, any other emerging market. So certainly one reason for the uh, rapid recovery in China, uh, in addition to the policy response that I just described, is that its exposure to global financial markets through these various linkages is pretty uh, limited. I would uh, go a little bit further and say not only is China the first globally significant economy to, to begin to recover, but I think it will be among the first to converge back to its long-term potential growth, which I think is something in the neighborhood of 9 to 10 percent. And I say that primarily because uh, the leverage in the Chinese economy everywhere you look is relatively modest. Uh, uh, deleveraging by households, uh, as Mike points out, maybe the savings rate in the U.S. is going to go up a couple more percentage points over the next year or two. Uh, deleveraging of households and financial institutions is not required. Uh, the household debt <clears throat> as a percentage of GDP in the run-up to the crisis is about 20 percent of GDP or 30 percent of disposable income as compared to levels of 100 percent and 130 uh, percent in the U.S., for example, uh, and even higher numbers in the case of the U.K. So the household sector does not need to uh, repair its balance sheets, uh, pay down debt, uh, and so forth. Uh, similar, <coughs> similarly, Chinese financial institutions have very little debt. They're not highly leveraged very high capital adequacy ratios. The regulator is raising those even further. So there's not very much leverage in the financial system, which of course is one of the reasons that the banks were able to respond with such alacrity uh, once monetary uh, easing started. There has been no need for the government to inject funds into the banking system, guarantee bank liabilities, uh, and so forth. And finally, one of the reasons I expect China to do relatively well uh, in terms of converging back towards its long-term potential growth is that China is not going to be uh, slowed uh, in the medium term by fiscal consolidation. Government debt going into the crisis uh, is a little under 20 percent of GDP, uh, even, and they're running fairly modest budget deficits now, 3 to 4 percent of GDP. They will emerge, uh, you know, in a, two, three years from now with government debt that's maybe 25 percent of GDP. So their, their fiscal position is strong. <clears throat> I don't think there are any serious questions about fiscal sustainability. They're not going to have to raise taxes or cut expenditures to get on a more uh, sustainable fiscal position. So for all of these reasons, uh, really, which comes down to leverage, the household sector, the financial sector, and government sector, I think China will be able to converge back towards its long-term potential growth. Well, finally, let me take up some of these issues that have been raised uh, repeatedly in the financial press and elsewhere about the sustainability of uh, China's recovery. Uh, certainly one charge is that uh, growth is all uh, bank-funded investment that's being undertaken by government uh, entities uh, and that this can't uh, go on. There's too much credit uh, and it's too much <coughs> state-directed. Well, I've already hinted the household sector is not very leveraged and can re-leverage. And you can see this is a, a UBS uh, for the first quarter. They haven't done it yet for the second quarter. But China has the strongest growth of household consumption uh, of any emerging market for which we have data. This is the entire universe of uh, emerging markets that publish quarterly GDP numbers. And China has the strongest growth of household consumption. So how consumption is making a significant contribution to China's recovery. I think if we did this for Q2, I don't know what, about the other countries in the sample here, but uh, China's growth uh, of household consumption would probably be at least as strong uh, in the second quarter <clears throat> as it was in the first. Of course, this is private, not government. Another example is the recovery of the real estate sector in China, particularly the residential property market. Uh, this was a sector that had a modest correction beginning in uh, the latter part, very end of 07, continuing through the early months of this year, but the property market, the residential property market, uh, which is entirely private, uh, as I say, after a modest correction, is, is recovering and I think will continue to contribute to uh, growth going forward. Uh, I don't think China is overinvested in housing given the very substantial uh, potential for further uh, increases in the rate of urbanization and so forth. Now, a final argument I want to look at <clears throat> is, again, one heard very, very commonly, and that is that China is simply pouring more money into manufacturing, creating excess capacity. Prices of a very broad range of commodities will ultimately fall. Uh, the, all this bank lending will turn into non-performing loans, and uh, this will all end very unhappily. 
But if you look at the data, which I always do before I make arguments, um, <laughs> you'll find uh, this is medium and long-term lending, which accounts for a little bit over half of all the new lending uh, every, every year in China. Uh, as you can see here, the share going to infrastructure, the blue line at the top, has been rising over time in the first half of this year, a little bit over 50% of this medium and long-term lending, which is the lending that finances fixed investment, is going into infrastructure. This is the build-out of water supply systems, sewage systems, the power grid, uh, the rail system, uh, urban metro systems, uh, and so forth that are uh, this major source of the growth of investment in China so far this year. How much is actually going into prop excuse me, into manufacturing? You can see it's never significantly above 10 percent. In the last data we have, which is for the first quarter of this year, only about 8 percent of this new bank lending is going into manufacturing. So there has been an explosion of credit in China in the first half of this year. It has been going to infrastructure to some extent. It has been going to households in the form of uh, a substantial increase in mortgage uh, borrowing in the household sector. In China, the households are re-leveraging. They're taking on more debt to, uh, uh, as they uh, move back into the property uh, sector. It's, and <clears throat> there's not much money uh, from the medium and long-term loans that is going into uh, the manufacturing sector. Traditionally, in China, as you can see obviously from the diagram, manufacturing has not really depended very much on bank credit. Most investment in the manufacturing sector in China in recent years has been financed from retained earnings, uh, depreciation funds, and profits. But what's been happening to profits, I'll just show you two sectors, electronic appliances. Uh, there's a very sharp uh, decline. If you look at uh, from August of 08 through May of 09, profits in this sector were off 60 percent. This is a sector where uh, demand has diminished. Uh, a very large chunk of the output of this sector, of course, is exported. And the firms in this sector are not expanding. Uh, they're very profit-oriented. Many of them have foreign investment. And given the sharp decline in their profitability, I don't think they're, uh, and their lack of borrowing from the financial sector, I think their investment is very low. Same thing is true for steel. Um, in the first seven months of this year, the in profits of the entire steel industry were 30 billion RMB. That's down 77 percent from the first seven months of last year when their profits were 130 billion. RMB. So there's some modest amount of investment going on in the steel industry, but this is not an industry that is uh, ramping up its production capacity uh, dramatically uh, on the back of a big increase uh, in credit. So I guess I would say in summary, uh, China's economy is recovering strongly. I think it will likely grow year over year. As I said this year, something in the neighborhood of 8 percent, probably slightly more. Uh, by next year, China could begin to converge back to its long-term uh, growth potential, so I would expect uh, growth next year somewhere in the 9 percent range and perhaps by 2011 somewhere in the 9 to 10 percent range. I don't think China's recovery uh, is going to be handicapped uh, by household and financial sector uh, deleveraging, as is the case in many other uh, certainly developed country markets. Uh, this will not be a handicap in the short run, and I think in the, in the medium term, uh, China will not be handicapped or will not have a drag on its growth because of uh, the requirement for uh, fiscal uh, consolidation. So I think this combination of a, of a strong policy response to the global crisis, uh, the relatively conservative financial policies that have been followed uh, is uh, standing the Chinese uh, economy in very good stead uh, so far this year and will continue to do so. Thank you.